Hi, welcome to the intro to Prometheus, Cortex, and PromQL. Uh, this is part of what's called the Weave Online User Group. Uh, our company is called Weaveworks, and my name is Tamo Nakahara, and we are lucky today to have speaker Brian Boren, who's also uh, at our company, Weaveworks. So hopefully you're here for the right talk. <laughs> Excellent. So um, before we get started, just a quick intro. Hopefully my slides will advance. So as I mentioned, our company is called Weaveworks. Uh, we're a startup based in London, San Francisco, Berlin, and have distributed teams, teams across the world. We are a um, startup that focuses on uh, the Kubernetes space primarily. Uh, we've been running Kubernetes in production for four years at this point, and uh, I'll share a little bit about what we offer. If you've heard of RabbitMQ, uh, our CEO, CTO, and some of our engineers come from the RabbitMQ background. They created RabbitMQ and sold it to VMware, and then they noticed needs in the growing container and Kubernetes space. So we're a startup that's uh, backed by Google Ventures and Excel Partners and a few other funders. So we've been in nice growth stage right now. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, uh, we're definitely a company founded on open source. A lot of people know, people know us for our um, first major project called WeaveNet, uh, which Brian is deeply involved in, and it's really one of the premier projects out there to do uh, networking for your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, Cortex, which is the topic for today, is um, based on Prometheus, but it extends and uh, improves upon Prometheus. You'll hear more about that. Um, we have other major projects, but some of the key ones right now are um, Flux, which is actually uh, WeFlux, which is now becoming back to Flux because we're in the process of going into the CNCF sandbox. Um, we've Scope and we've Flagger, which does a lot of different interesting things. So check those out or come to our future talks if you'd like to hear more. Um, and we are also a company <laughs> with paid products. Um, one of our products um, that we've had the longest is called Weave Cloud, and that's a SaaS project that helps you do um, observability, automated deployments, and um, monitoring for your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, we've been running Weave Cloud on Kubernetes on AWS, uh, so that's how we, off we get our um, uh, in production uh, experience for all these years. Uh, and some of the open source projects that we've created are sort of the underlying technologies for that SaaS product that then incorporates all those different elements for a enterprise experience. Um, we're also building out a Weave Kubernetes platform, which is part of the technology that we created to put um, Weave Cloud on Kubernetes on AWS. And, and now we are productizing that for um, uh, GitOps aware enterprise platform. So if you have any interest in that um, or any consulting or training that often comes with our helping you get started with the Kubernetes platform, please contact me after this present, um, presentation. So our website is called weave.works. So check us out if you haven't heard of us. Although I see a lot of um, good returning friends here who uh, definitely know about us. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have Brian Borum, who's the Director of Engineering here at Weaveworks. Uh, my name is Tomo, I'll be emceeing. Uh, we usually aim for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the length of the presentation, number of questions. We will go to the full hour if there are plenty more, but our general sweet spot is about 45. Some housekeeping, we're using Zoom as the platform here. So um, the main way to ask questions is use the chat box. Hopefully you can find it. Um, if you don't see the button for it, sometimes hitting escape gets you out of full screen mode and uh, that'll help you to find the button, which is usually on the top left corner of your screen. Uh, a, a reminder that when you do chat, please make sure to choose the two to default to everyone or to all panelists and attendees so that other people can see your questions and some people um, give answers so that the other people can see your answers. Um, if you do only to all panelists, then um, the other people will not be able to see it. Uh, unless you have something burning and terribly private, um, make sure to send to everybody. Um, generally, if there are general questions, I will paste it over to everyone so people know what questions are coming through. Uh, so that's primarily it. And with that, I will hand it over to Brian. Let me know if I need to stop sharing. Yeah, uh, if you can. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Uh, yeah, let me find my window. How does that look? Looks great. Um, okay, so as uh, as Tamil 
uh, has introduced. Uh, I'm going to be talking about um, a couple of open source projects, Prometheus and Cortex. And uh, they are in the, the monitoring space. So I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd start right back uh, with this question. Why do we monitor? What are we, what are we talking about um, when we say monitoring? Uh, do we have a question? Is there an issue? Oh, okay. uh, no, I just say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I saw something flash up on my screen. I'm, I'm spoiling the flow. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to... Uh, here we are. Right. Why do we monitor? Um, so I guess the, the first thing a lot of people th think about is, is the idea that, that you're monitoring your computer system just to see if it's operating okay. Um, and uh, to see if, if it's uh, running fast enough and running with the available resources and not generating too many errors and lots of, of concepts like that. Um, and something we'll talk about again in a few minutes, uh, getting an alert automatically uh, if it isn't operating as expected. Um, but there are other things you might wanna do with monitoring uh, once you, have an idea that something's wrong, you might want to drill down. You might want to look into more and more detail um, to try and figure out what caused it to go wrong. Um, at the other end of the scale, you might want to zoom out to, to view trends over time. You might want to say, well, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're serving twice as many users as we did uh, a year ago or something like that. So, so that might be another reason to, um, to have this kind of data. Um, and uh, another thing is, is continuous improvement. If you have data about how your system is operating, um, then you can, you can use that data to uh, make improvements, optimizations, um, make the system better over time. So there's a, a range of reasons why people want to monitor systems. And, and I wanted to introduce that to to kind of set the scene that um, if you're not familiar with the particular way that, that Prometheus, the take that Prometheus has on monitoring, maybe you've come from a, from a different tool, um, just to sort of set the scene, it's quite a broad scope uh, and, and a lot of ways that, that uh, these tools try to meet these needs. Um, so what do we mean by metrics? Uh, it's basically a number that tells you something, otherwise, you know, why bother capturing it? Um, but something, something that might vary over time. Uh, so how much memory something is using or, or how long an operation took or, or how many requests we've served. Um, so these are all, are all numbers that we might um, want to capture. And then we might want to draw a picture, something like a dashboard, a, a graph, a chart over time. We can look at how these numbers vary. Um, so that's the kind of thing that Prometheus deals with. Um, it, uh, it doesn't deal with textual information or, or uh, you know, qualitative information about what's going on. It deals with, with numbers, lots and lots and lots of numbers. Um, so let's walk through Prometheus in operation. Um, what exactly does it do? Um, we'll start with, with your system, your apps, your, your code that's sitting there running. So you will introduce a Prometheus server um, and, and Prometheus will call out to your applications and pull metrics. So those, all of those different numbers, um, if you're if your apps are instrumented to return some interesting numbers, Prometheus will pull them all back uh, and store them as, as um, metrics inside Prometheus. Um, I, I stress it's a pull model. Other monitoring systems have used the idea that your system will push data, uh, but, but Prometheus is, is pulling data. So it will come out maybe once a minute, um, maybe once every 15 seconds, something like that, pull a new set of data uh, and those quantities will, will show up varying over time. Um, 
once you've got all that data, you might want to see it on screen. Uh, so some kind of um, dashboard client, we'll look at some popular ones in a minute. Um, but that's kind of the, the primary uh, UI that people think of. Um, they're going to they're gonna view those um, metrics. Uh, another word that we use is time series. Um, just, a, just a set of numbers varying over time that, that hopefully tells you something. Um, Prometheus is storing this information on disk. Um, and one of the really best features of, of Prometheus is that, that it compresses. That's what this kind of vice thing is, is meant to be showing. Um, the, it compresses the data down. And it takes advantage of the idea that in, in one of these varying uh, time series, the next value is pretty much the same as the one before. You know, they don't tend to jump around wildly within the space of possible numbers. So it, it gets a, a tremendous amount of compression, um, like uh, 10 to 1 compression, and store that, stores that information on disk. Uh, stores it, um, you know, just in, in files, uh, wherever you're running Prometheus. So what else happens? Um, well, as well as your own apps, uh, you might run some um, uh, some more things called exporters. And, and in the Prometheus world, an exporter is something that takes some data, some metrics that's already available in a different form and makes it available in the Prometheus form. Um, so these are used to export uh, machine level data, which you know is, is already provided by your operating system, to export maybe Java metrics, JMX, or to export uh, um, SQL data, or you know all different. Uh, there's a huge number of these exporters in the ecosystem, um, and that's a way. Uh, generally, you get a big leap forward. You can start gathering a lot of data. Um, there are Kubernetes exporters, for instance, if that's if that's an area you want to monitor. Um, so more data comes in, and we can bring that out on our um, dashboards, uh, and um, that's really the the two main sources of the data in in the Prometheus world is is your code that is directly instrumented, or exporting from some other source. Um, and then one more thing: uh, how does Prometheus know what to talk to. So Prometheus will hook up to some kind of service discovery mechanism to get a list of all the applications, all the services, all the nodes, all the exporters. Um, this can be, again, if, if you're in the Kubernetes world, this is talking directly to Kubernetes and, and saying, what are all the, the deployments and jobs and services? Um, uh, Prometheus has a wide range of different service discovery options. Um, so there's some way uh, to let it know and hopefully let it know automatically. So you don't have to reconfigure anything. This is very much uh, the, the, the cloud native concept that the tooling doesn't really care if something shuts down on one machine and starts up on another one or starts up on 10. Um, it finds that out dynamically from a service discovery uh, mechanism and will monitor everything that you're running without you having to kind of carefully hand configure all those things. So that's Prometheus. It um, gathers the metrics, they vary over time, it stores them on disk and it draws or it supplies the data to um, uh, draw a dashboard or a, a view of the data on screen. The a UI that comes with Prometheus, if you run nothing else, looks like this. Um, it's kind of primitive, uh, but it lets you uh, run queries, which are in the um, PromQL language, um, which we'll talk in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, so uh, as I say, this is, this is a, quite a primitive UI. Uh, you really need to know a, a tremendous amount about um, Prometheus and PromQL before you can really get anywhere with, with the Prometheus built-in tooling. Um, in our own product, uh, the Tamil mentioned uh, Weave Cloud, um, we automatically draw dashboards for your cluster, for 
Kubernetes namespaces for, for many different um, workloads. So, so that's a completely at the other end of the, the scale. You don't have to know any PromQL to get these out. Um, and probably the, the most popular uh, tool that people use to dashboard with Prometheus um, is a thing called Grafana. So this is another open source project um, uh, uh, from a, a, a different set of folks. Um, Grafana is really full featured. Uh, again, it takes a lot of knowledge to configure your own dashboards, but um, the Grafana is really, really popular. It, it is very likely that you'll be able to, to find a dashboard for, uh, you know, let's say you're interested in monitoring Postgres. You can find a Postgres dashboard. You can probably find 10 of them. Um, or any other system that you're interested in, you can um, you can view that way, uh, and it's really powerful. So um, so that that is a very popular tool. Okay, um, so let's get into metrics a little bit more. Metrics within the Prometheus world uh, basically have a name and they have labels. So here's an example. Um, this metrics name is HTTP requests total. Uh, and I've drawn the labels. This is kind of the way that it, that it appears um, when you're, you're looking at the raw data, when you're uh, interacting with, um, with Prometheus. Um, so that, so the, the name, the labels, and you generally get a few more labels. You know, generally your system will, um, decorate your metrics with maybe which machine it's running on or, or if you're Kubernetes in, in which pod it's running. A lot, of, a lot of different data can be attached to the metrics and that lets you slice and dice things later on. Um, and finally, a value. You know, this is the metric, the value. Uh, and if this is the number of requests we've served, um, then hopefully this number is going up over time. Uh, and that would be the, the time series. Um, you know, when we looked at it, it was 136. And if we came back a minute later, maybe it's 150, maybe it's uh, 160 the next time. So, um, uh, so that is the nitty gritty concept of a metric. It's a, it's a thing that's got a, a name and it's got labels. Um, so, when we come to query these metrics, um, I can, uh, if I have a whole bunch of different metrics, I can filter them down. Uh, so this is writing a query, which I would then put into one of those uh, GUI clients. I'll, I'll, I'll try and demo this in a minute. Um, so the basic idea is uh, PromQL lets you um, write queries. It, it is really powerful, really uh, huge range of features. But the, the basic features are I can, I can filter the data down to what I want to see. You know, if I, had a, if I had a lot of different services, then I'm filtering just to my web server. I can aggregate the data. I can um, sum things up. Uh, and I can differentiate the data, meaning I can take the rate at which things change. So. So if that number is going up all the time, the number of requests, um, and I take the rate, uh, and this little bit means I'm taking the rate over one minute, um, what Prometheus does is, is kind of subtracts the value one minute behind. Um, and that tells me the, uh, the rate at which it's increasing. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's maybe try and show that on screen. Uh, so, is my, um, uh, yeah, okay. So, is that, uh, I hope this window is visible. Yep, I, it is. Uh, I have a screen that says new notebook. Is that, is that what you can see? Yes. Great. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm using Weave Cloud because uh, I work on Weave Cloud, um, but it would be pretty much the same in uh, the Prometheus GUI. At this level, it's a little bit more primitive. And in the 
Grafana GUI looks pretty much the same, except the the, the background color is black. Um, so uh, if I put in this, um, just the name of the metric as a as a query, um, I get a I get a whole bunch of different ones out. And like I mentioned earlier, there there are usually more labels than just one or two. Um, so we have the the service that is telling me these numbers. We have um, uh, an instance, which is like, which thing did we get the metric from? Um, we have a Kubernetes namespace. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different labels that I could use to um, narrow this down. Uh, so just to illustrate that, I could say um, the service is kubedns. And uh, now I've, I've narrowed down um, the uh, uh, requests just to that one service. Um, here's the the value. That's the number of requests served so far. If I if I redo the query, the value goes up a little bit. Um, if I draw that as a graph, they're all kind of uh, angled lines going up over time. So that uh, uh, as a person who's familiar with PromQL, that suggests to me, I need to take the rate of this metric, take the rate over one minute, just like we did in the example. Um, and now, uh, well now we've got some you know, flatter lines because the rate is fairly constant. Um, these ones are pretty wiggly. Uh, so the rate is kind of bouncing up and down, but they're very low rate. This is just a, a little, uh, a demo cluster um, that's not really doing a lot. Uh, but you kind of get the idea. Um, we are uh, seeing um, different metrics, uh, well, the same metric, uh, the number of requests we've served from um, different programs running. Um, and if I don't want to see it at that level of detail, I can, I can sum them up. Um, so I can say, I just want to see one rate uh, for my service. Um, and it's a bit nicer to deal with. Uh, that's the rate at which I'm serving these requests. Um, so I don't want to get too deeply into uh, the details of PromQL at this stage. The, um, what I want to get across is, uh, the basics are pretty simple. Um, you know, you, you filter down what you want to see. Uh, if it's one of these things that's counting up over time, then you, you take the rate. Um, and then you might want to sum things up just to, uh, just to kind of lose some of the detail. Uh, you always take the rate first and then sum. Um, because if, if something restarts, then, then it's counter would reset and it, Prometheus needs to see the, that in the detailed level. Uh, so you always, always take the rate first and then sum. Um, there's a battery of statistical functions, you know, um, uh, averages and standard deviations and so on. There's um, even predictive functions in, in PromQL. You can join uh, just like in a in a SQL database, you can join different metric, different time series together to bring out different information. Um, so there's there's a, a huge amount of power in there in the PromQL language, um, and uh, uh, go over to the um, Prometheus.io documentation site to find the the full detail about that. So let me return to my slides. Um, uh, just on the previous page, yeah, that's the Prometheus.io. That's the the site where the um, documentation lives. So let me go back to full screen. Um, so we did the demo. Uh, another thing Prometheus can do for us is is um, is alerts, automated alerting. So we don't want to necessarily have someone sit and watch the dashboard all day long. Uh, we can have Prometheus do that. Um, this is a very simple uh, alert definition. You, you, um, 
there's really no GUI for this. You, you type these things in uh, to a file in um, Prometheus. Uh, so you, you give an expression. Um, and in this case, what I've said is, is I want to be alerted if, the, if my rate of requests falls below 0.1 per second. So like if I'm, if I'm not getting people hitting my service all day long, I want to get an alert. It's a made up example. Uh, I've, I've given it a name, low requests. Um, and you know, maybe it's just going to blip down very quickly. I don't want to be alerted for that. I, I want to be alerted if this rate falls below my threshold for five minutes solid. Um, so Prometheus is just gonna, gonna execute this PromQL query over and over again. It's gonna watch if it meets the condition for five minutes, it's gonna fire an alert. Um, and, and in the Prometheus architecture is actually a separate process that then picks up that alert and, and delivers it maybe via email or, or you know, webhook to Slack or um, one of the services like Ops Genie. Uh, that's, that's the basic idea of alerting. Uh, you don't want to watch the dashboard yourself all day long. Um, you want the machine to do that for you. Uh, we set up, uh, you know, in, a, in our own um, Kubernetes system, we, we have uh, like a hundred different alerts that, that we set up and those, those come as part of the, the Weave Cloud package as well. Um, Okay, so I said I was gonna talk about Cortex. Uh, what is Cortex? Cortex, um, Cortex takes the Prometheus code and makes it scalable. So let's talk a bit about, uh, let's go back to the, uh, oh, okay, I have, a, I have a summary slide. Um, Cortex is scalable, it's highly available, it provides long-term storage and it's multi-tenant. Um, it's another open source, project, everything, uh, all the, the, the basic software I've talked about is, is open source. Um, and you can find it on uh, GitHub. Um, Cortex doesn't have a cool cortex.io webpage. It just, just has the uh, code repo on GitHub. Um, yeah, let's, let's go back to a picture I put up earlier. This is the, the basic operation of Prometheus. Um, Prometheus is, is sitting there. Prometheus is one server uh, and it is doing this, what we call scraping as picking up metrics from, from all the different places. Um, so imagine now you had a whole lot more applications and nodes and exporters and so on. Um, uh, well, Prometheus runs as one server. So basically where you have to go is you have to get a bigger server. Um, and this works, uh, you know, the Prometheus is really efficiently coded. Um, you, can, uh, you can serve like a million different metrics um, out of one Prometheus server, uh, maybe more if you can find a box big enough. But, um, you know, people have, have bigger estates than that even. Um, so where they go next with, with Prometheus uh, is more than one of them. So they, they figure out some way that their world divides down, uh, you know, maybe, uh, oops, I went too far, maybe into apps versus infrastructure, or maybe they divide it by East Coast, West Coast, or, you know, somehow they divide up their world and they, um, they run multiple Prometheus servers and, and they get bigger that way. Um, but you're left with a problem at, at this point. How do you, how do you draw one dashboard, one, uh, picture that brings it all together, uh, which you can't really do with um, with all these different uh, Prometheus servers. Um, so that was uh, one starting point that we had with Cortex. The other one is uh, Cortex we run as part of our Weave Cloud service. Um, so we want to take data from multiple people. You know, anyone can show up to Weave Cloud. Uh, run a free trial or put in your credit card, become a customer. Um, we will accept data from all different people. Uh, so we need to um, keep that separate. So that's the idea of multi-tenant. Uh, so that's, that's another reason we built Cortex. The two reasons, we wanted to scale as big as anyone needed, and we wanted to store the data for multiple different people segregated. 
So let's take a, a brief look at how we did that. Um, we basically take the code of Prometheus and split it up into microservices. Um, we're still using the same uh, scraping code, the same code that goes out to your apps and exporters and grabs the metrics. That's actually uh, unmodified. Um, then we use a remote write API to uh, have Prometheus send up the, the data to Cortex. Um, we receive the data and, and we, we split it up. We, we shard the data. We split it across uh, as many different servers as you want to run. Um, these servers receive the data uh, and, and run the compression process, same, same compression that, that Prometheus runs. Um, then we store it. Uh, we don't store it on disk because we, um, we want to we wanna store you know, a tremendous number of metrics. And we also want to have it highly durable. Um, you know, if, you, if you have your only copy on disk and you lose the disk, uh, it's gone. So, so to be durable, you need to store more than one copy on disk. And beyond that, you need to be running some kind of um, mechanism to uh, you, because at that scale, you will lose disk. So every time you lose a disk, you have to make more copies. Um, so that whole process, we, we outsource to some um, NoSQL data store. Uh, DynamoDB is an example, Google Bigtable, Cassandra, um, something like that, something which has those properties that it can store um, terabytes of data and it, it's highly durable. That's what we use in, in this slot. And then uh, uh, we run the PromQL code from Prometheus, uh, fetching the data from that um, uh, big cloud data store. Uh, and we serve exactly the same API. So this can be Grafana, this can be any um, UI that works with, with Prometheus will work with Cortex. Um, because we've split everything up into multiple microservices, we can, we can scale differently. You know, if you, if you have a lot of data coming in, then you run a lot of these, uh, what we call ingester processes. If you have a lot of people querying the data, then you run a lot of query processes. You can pick the number according to uh, how much load you have. Um, and we also, uh, we do a tremendous amount of caching of the data because we, we're already running many, many processes uh, in a big Cortex installation. Um, so we will uh, cache queries, we'll, we'll you know, as you, as you redraw your dashboard, most of it, you know, typically you're watching a dashboard and it moves a little bit, most of it's the same. Uh, so we cache all that, we cache the database lookups. Um, we, we have multiple levels of caching in Cortex, uh, which makes it really fast as well. So that's kind of a whistle stop tour. That's, that's you know, why did we create Cortex? It, Cortex was created at Weaveworks. It is um, uh, donated to the CNCF. It's used by a community of, of different folks, including Grafana Labs. Um, and uh, uh, that's the, the basic architecture, uh, how it works. It is mostly built using Prometheus code. That's the beauty of open source. Um, and uh, built in a different way, in a, in a horizontally scalable. We, we've broken it up into pieces. And, you can, um, and we're using a uh, scalable cloud store, um, like a Cassandra or a DynamoDB. Okay. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to talk about that right now. So um, that is, yeah, basically uh, what I wanted to talk about. Um, I well, shall pause for questions or to deconfuse anyone I've lost. Checking to see. Um, reminder if anybody, I noticed some people came later. Um, please find the chat box. It's the best way to type in your questions. Either people feel fully satisfied with the information you've provided or they're utterly confused. Can you describe dot, dot, dot? <laughs> 
just while we're waiting to see about questions, I, I thought I'd, I'd put this slide up, which has the link to um, uh, to the Cortex project. Excellent. Um, all right, we have a couple. Um, Kingdon, thanks for coming back. It's great to see you. Um, Kingdon asks, how large is the Weave Cloud Cortex installation in terms of node count? Uh, we, that is commercially sensitive information. Oh. <laughs> okay. A bunch. A bunch, okay. Um, and he says, okay, and waves. I'm not sure if uh, I should say this, but maybe we can follow up by email. I'm not sure, but if it's commercially sensitive, maybe not. Um, but we know you, so I'm happy to chat. Uh, I, 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 uh, you know, we, if we get uh, Alexis, our CEO, to okay, we can release the information, but I'm not supposed to talk, you know, I'm not supposed to talk in those terms publicly. Makes sense. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna piece together Sebastian's different parts of his question. Can you describe more specifically the mechanism for pulling data from the agents? That's a good question. Okay, uh, so, uh, so that's kind of here, I'm, if I understand correctly. Um, uh, it is a HTTP call. Um, it is really quite simple. Um, so uh, you, either your application or an exporter arranges to listen on a particular port. Um, uh, and uh, the sort of standard URL that we, we listen on is, is slash metrics. Um, and then the, the Prometheus understands um, a few different formats of data. The, uh, uh, a text format where basically the lines look like that metric line that I put up on the screen earlier. Um, so it has the name, it has the labels, and it has a number. Um, and then there's a, uh, so that's like the Prometheus text format. Uh, there's an, another format which is called open metrics, um, which is almost exactly the same. Um, there are some other formats that I won't confuse things by talking about, but that's, that's the basic idea. Prometheus will, will hit a URL either on your application or on an exporter and it will get back a bunch of text. Uh, and the text is like one line per metric and all the names and all the labels are in there. Uh, and I hope I answered your question. Yep, let us know if you wanna know more. Uh, we'll move to Tarek, Tarek's question. Uh, could you talk about self-monitoring capabilities of Cortex? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, we, uh, we run Weave Cloud as a, as a service that's up 24-7. Um, and, uh, and we monitor it using Cortex. Um, so uh, Cortex exports uh, thousands of, of metrics around. I mean, if I, if I flip over to my um, Cortex architecture slide, it's where you, if you hadn't done so many animations. Um, uh, yeah, so we're exporting like the um, number of requests that are coming in and the uh, latencies. Um, we are uh, at, at, e at each level of the architecture, you know, the number of things coming in, the number of things in memory. I really didn't want to, I had that slide in case I went too fast in the, in the early thing. I didn't want to go onto the red model uh, unless anyone asks a question about it. But um, uh, yeah, so, so, you know, in brief, uh, uh, Cortex exports um, a lot of a lot of metrics at each stage, uh, you know, number of queries that have come in, number of time spent waiting uh, to execute queries. Um, as as a service that's open on the internet, we um, uh, we have to be quite protective, uh, you know. So we have a bunch of limits um, that uh, if you pay us more, you can have higher limits. But but basically, that's another thing that we monitor. Um, uh, data being rejected because it's coming in too fast or, or too many different metrics or uh, too many labels or, you know, some, sometimes people send the uh, 
a label string that's way too long. There's a whole bunch of stuff like that that we protect against within Cortex, and all of that is exposed as metrics. Um, and then, and then speaking as uh, the the engineers running this thing, uh, we have alerts set up. So we uh, uh, we alert on high error rates, on high latency. Um, we alert. Uh, we also alert on, on things like high memory conditions because if you've got a, you know, got a lot of data coming in, it will expand in memory. But I, again, I hope I'm answering the question. Maybe um, I can't find my chat window, so I, I don't know if anyone's talking Let's back see. to me. Sorry, it might just be me, but um, actually, I think it's just me. You, you froze for me for a second, but it looks like it's my internet. Oh, okay. People can let... Well, I can repeat something or try to verify. I think it's my connection. I'm turning off my video. I don't think it's an issue for other people. All right. Um, yeah. Can people hear me? I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Good. Uh, I'll turn off my video because I think it's my connection here at our WeWork. Um, any, okay, looks like that was a good answer. Any last questions? We're getting to the end for the 45 minutes. Um, I'll start sharing my uh, closing slides, but if anybody has anything that comes up later, um, we can either give it a couple minutes or uh, we can uh, continue to answer your questions on our Slack. Can everybody see this? Brian, can you see it? Our closing slide. Uh, we have online user group, I can see. Excellent. Um, so thanks everybody for joining. Uh, as I mentioned, this is our Weave online user group. Um, you can see Stacy here on our calls. Thanks to her, we're um, back up for our 2019 calendar. And we've got talks almost every Tuesday. Uh, so this is a general series on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, depending on the time of year, 6 p.m. UK time, and hopefully it works for other people. Um, depending on what goes on, we might have a couple other days, but please know that Tuesdays, most Tuesdays, will be um, having a variety of talks. As you can see, we've got talks on QBDM, and um, we have um, some partner talks that will be on different platforms, but we're working on Tuesdays. So please join us for that. Uh, and the best place to find this calendar is on our meetup page, the Weave user group um, link on our meetup page. Um, but if you have any questions or if you have any uh, interest in Weave Cloud or um, the Kubernetes platform that we mentioned, feel free to uh, email me at my address. Uh, you'll get a follow-up email for this. You can just respond. That will go to me. Um, or come to our Slack channel if you have any other questions on Cortex. Um, Brian is very actively there doesn't seem to sleep, checks in before he goes to bed, UK time. And uh, so with that, let me do one last check. Any last questions in the chat? Sorry, with Zoom, I have to bounce around. Uh, looks like we're good. So thanks everybody for joining and thank you to Brian. And we'll see you guys at the future events. Thanks so much. Thank you. See you. Bye everybody. <laughs>